Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and Forged Irish Stout. I'd like to be joined by Lee Wood Lee here in Belfast. Before we talk about the fight tomorrow, huge fight for a close friend Jordan Gill. You've had a bit of a tour of Belfast earlier on today. Um, I woke up to a little post, see you'd visited a, a mural. Was it a quiet time of day that you went or what, what, what was it like? Yeah, it was quite early to be honest. I think we arrived at the hotel about half nine, so it would have been before then. I was actually quite surprised how much support I've got in Belfast. Um, yeah, I didn't think um, I didn't think there'd be as much as there is, and um, I was quite taken back by it, to be honest. You mentioned that before um, that you you know get messages. Um, I think jo Jordan's mentioned it as well, saying he's been getting messages of, of support. Um, is that taking you by surprise at all? Yeah, I've always had messages from people from Ireland. I, even I know because I send a lot of tickets out to Ireland before fights. My auntie does my tickets and she says the amount of tickets you've had out to Ireland is incredible. And obviously coming over for the fights, so, mm -hmm. um, to actually get here and, and come to the to the weigh-in and people asking for photos and saying the fans and that and they come to support Jordan, it just shows you. I think a lot of the Irish are either for or against Mick, um, which is good for him when he sells tickets. But at the same time. The other half will, will back his opponent. So, you visiting that mural, playing games, play, no, playing no. Play, you, you must come on. You, you're <laughs> playing some mind games. You visiting his mural. No, the, to be honest, the taxi driver when we got in the t in the, the minibus, he says, "Are oh, you here for the boxing?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, we're here for the boxing." And then um, he goes, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm good friends with Mick." And then um, my friend goes, "Oh, he knocked him out." <laughs> so oh, God, I was died in the back. <laughs> they go, where's he going to attack his, where's, where's he going to attack his knife, do you know what I mean? But, um, got to chat to him, nice fella, and, um, so I was taking to see some bits and bobs of the mirror of Mick, I said, oh, I'll have a photo, so I had a photo with it, and then he took us to the, uh, the Peace Wall, and I signed the Peace Wall, that's incredible, just, just, a lot of history, a lot of history, I think it's been there 50 years, and he said, um, every night, you know, people that don't know, they close them gates every night, I think it's 7pm, 7, 7 that's just crazy. Even today, like there's still there's still a bit of beef, but um, it's fascinating. Um, last time I came to Belfast, I was in and out on that private jet with Eddie. We flew in and we flew out, and I didn't really press didn't, conference. For yeah, conference. for the Colin fight, yeah, I didn't really get to see anything. Uh, it's nice to have a look around and um, see a few sights. Absolutely. Look, before we talk about you and what's next, which I know is sort of topic of conversation because of the connotations with Michael and your previous history. Um, Jordan Gill, a close friend who's been with you through thick and thin, gets his opportunity to, in many people's minds, cause an upset. In your mind, I'm sure it won't because you're, back, change, you're backing change, your friend. Change his life as well, change his life. Um, he deserves it, but he knows he's got to go out and, and, and get it. Uh, he knows what he needs to do. I had this conversation so many times, trying not to give anything away, but not talking riddles. He knows what he needs to do to win this fight. He knows what his keys to victory are. And that doesn't make it any easier. He's still got to go out and, and do it. Mick's a really good fighter. Um, he's so skillful and there's going to be times in this fight when Jordan will be getting caught and he needs to knuckle down and, and, uh, and stick to what he's doing. But I believe uh, he can get it done. I spoke to Jordan and said, look, um, nobody wants to give a game plan away, but we've seen it when times are hard for you and you've pulled it out of the bag. I mean, Kareem Gurfe, um, an opponent of Michael Conlon's, obviously Michael did that in a round against Gurfe, but Jordan pulled it out of the bag when he needed to at the end. Um, I asked him, do you have to knock Michael Conlon out in this fight? And he said, look, I believe I can, but he also did reference that he just wants a fair crack at the whip with the judges. Um, I know that's always a thing when you go into the lion's den, but um, do you believe he knocks Michael Conlon out? I believe he can. He can. It's possible. Um, but like you say, I hope, hopefully if he don't, uh, they fear on the cards. And I think they will be. Um, but yeah, if he does everything right, I believe he can't get him out of there. You've shared the ring with Michael. Um, I referenced this to him when I interviewed him and said, look, um, I think I interviewed you in Newcastle. And I said, I asked you something along the lines of, have you been giving any pointers and tips? And his response to that was, what tips could, could he give him? I was beating him for 11 and a half rounds and I'm sure you've seen maybe a clip. Um, what do you what do you make of that? That is right. What, what, what tips can I give him? Get pasted for 11 rounds and knock him out in the talk. Well, if it works, mate, go and do it. You know what I mean? Like, a win's a win. But no, look, if you look at it from another point of view, I got dropped in the first round. It took me three or four rounds to get my legs back. Then I started chipping away and doing what I needed to do. 
then my game plan got implemented and I still managed to successfully implement it and get him out. So if you look at it that way, I still managed to win, doing what I needed to do from round four to 12, which should have been rounds one to 10, really, or one to eight, then um, yeah, go and do what I did. Well, look, depending on what happens this week, another question I asked you was, would you ever entertain a rematch with Mick? And Jamie Conlon said, look, I hear him saying Josh Warrington. I hear him saying all these names. He doesn't mention Mick. And I made this point to Michael and said, well, maybe that's because his best mate's fighting you. And he's not going to say, yeah, I'll fight him, because obviously you're here 100% behind someone who you believe is going to beat him. So I'll ask you again from your point of view. I know you and Jordan are tight. But if it does go wrong for Jordan, it's a boxing match, anything can happen. And I'm not saying you believe he will lose this fight. If Michael comes through, you have Joe Cordina, world champion. You told me you'll fight anyone at the City Grand, but a big fight, it's always good to have a bit of narrative. You had a fight of the year with Michael Conlon, probably still the best fight I've seen live. And you had a fight with Josh Warrington where there is still a bit of needle there. And speaking to Josh, you've still got that there as well. Would you entertain a Michael Conlon rematch if he comes through? Oh, I'd love to. Um, I'd love to uh, be a little bit younger because I could just fight all these guys again. Because they've all got, there's always something. I'm not them all out, but there's always there's always something. But um, you never know what's going to happen with boxing. There's a lot of twists and turns. But I think at the minute, with how things are and uh, the numbers that we'll, we'll generate with Warrington, I think he's the front runner. But I will fight anyone at the city ground. Whether that's Cordino or a rematch with him, anyone like, I'm expecting my friend to win tomorrow night. But um, that's never, why I say, with all due respect, you never, you never, yeah. you never know what's going to happen in boxing. Um, nothing's a given. Like I said, Jordan, he's got a hard fight, but um, I believe he can do it. He's looking so confident, and I think his confidence is coming from knowing the direction in which he needs to approach this fight and, and get the job done. But yeah, uh, City Grand. If I could pick anyone and, and forget about the numbers and say, right, you can pick anyone. The Forest Faithful will, will be there for you. The city of Nottingham and everyone else that travels from other cities and uh, even Ireland and everywhere will come back here. You can fight anyone. And the money's there, everything, everything's right, the atmosphere. I would, I would pick Navarrete because I get to, to win another belt. I get to fight the best who, who everyone says, Ring Magazine, everyone says is number one. So I get to become number one by beating him. Um, Another world title in a yeah exactly that exactly that but um, that's in the ideal world but it's, it's not but we live in a world where other things are governed by supporters and uh, yeah and how much money is generated by ticket sales and he wants to see what but um, if it's Warrington again I'll knock him out for a fortunate city ground I hold my life <laughs> <laughs> well look I think you've obviously got sort of it's up to you kind of thing you you, you hold all the cards you know if I'm a world it. champion that's it you know a lot of people have, or a lot of fighters are like trying to scream for the rematch but at the end of the day you know I've earned my spot I beat these guys and even when I got beat I come back and beat them straight away so you know I've earned my spot I've earned my right to fight there and I've earned my right to pick who I fight there so um, yeah we'll see but I'll, I'll leave it in it, uh, effectively to, to the fans and to Eddie really who they really want to see in the fight so I'll leave it to them ok up. You've achieved quite a lot in your career, and you mentioned their boxing doesn't always go the way it plans. And I'm sure in your career you'd have planned it a bit different from fight from when, before you started this journey in terms of you know defeats you took earlier on. Um, but it's worked out for you, and it's worked out for you in a big way. In terms of goals and things like that, have you any aspirations to fight in America or anything like that? When I speak to Josh, he says, "Look, that was something on my hit list. I've always wanted to fight in America." Michael's obviously done it. Have you any aspiration to cross the pond and? Do a and do a big show that. Well, let's just end this in two right away because Leo wants to go bowling. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think like if, like I said earlier, if I had more fights and yeah, maybe Vegas. Vegas is like the the capital of boxing, isn't it? Like I think that would be a great one. Um, Navarrete over there. Yeah, possibly. Or even like I don't know anyone. Anyone like I'm never in a boring fight. I'm really. Do you um, know what, I know you say you're never in a boring fight, but considering how the fights have gone. Like I said, you mentioned the fight with Michael and Josh and things like that. You've had to. Uh, I'm just going to do a. I'm just going to do a two-hour epilogue. I hope you, I hope you boys are out waiting. Um, which bit? Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. They're your friends. Don't worry about it. Um, losing my train of thought. Yeah. But yeah, you've you've had you've had such like a storied career kind of thing. You mentioned there. Look, I wish I was a bit younger. Realistically. 
is the forest ground one and done for you? Yeah, I think we're nearly there. I put in the contract before the last fight. It needs to be uh, all nailed down, opponent and dates and uh, purses and all the smaller details have to be nailed down by I think it's second or third month in, in the new year. So then if Eddie can't deliver it, then someone else can, basically. But I think he can. If anyone can do it, he can do it, they can do it. So um, I'm confident it's nearly done. I've got whispers of dates and stuff. So um, it's down to the opponents and that now. Uh, we've got a few more meetings coming up. We're nearly there. Do you mention when you mention and talk about your age, you're you're entering this new weight class now, though. Where you've obviously notably said, even Josh has said, look, you're 30, you're in your 30s. Michael's moving up to 30 now. It's time to let your bodies grow. It's almost a shame if that is going to be your last one because you, Joe, obviously, I know Jordan's fighting Michael, but whatever happens there, Josh, could all just have classics round robins. Is that have you got the hunger to do that kind of thing? Like, is that, is that still in you or is it a case of if I tick that box, I'm sort of, what, what else is there to climb? I will always have that side of me where if I'm fighting, like, I've got it in me to just do what I need to do to win. I'm competitive, I'm so competitive, like, so, so much drive to do it. But um, I'm sensible and, like, I don't want to be, I don't want to keep taking hammer on for when I don't need to. Like, people say, oh, you can't turn that payday down. Another X amount, are. seven figures, like, I can turn down. I can turn it down because I've got uh, enough to live the life I want to live. Like including my next fight. Like it's more than enough. Like I'm not greedy. And people, people say, oh yeah, but you can't turn it down. I can because like my health is more important to me than it's not going to make any difference having that amount of money more than I've already got. Like I don't live a life which is which is like beyond my means. Like I've got enough money for my kids and their futures. But at the same time, like you don't want to spoil the kids and give them everything. You want to give them some. Some, some some motivation to go and earn their own money because in any walk of life you know the journey is normally better than the destination giving someone something makes them feel like they've not accomplished it themselves so yeah like I've done what I need to do I've done what I set out to do um, and after the city ground fight it's going to be a conversation where it's like well do I really need another fight yeah do I really need another fight even if it's worth it financially like well what am I getting out of it but um, I will miss boxing daily and I'll, I'll miss it more than anything but um I don't want to be be blowing bubbles in, in 20, 20 years' time. So. There's two more from me then, because you've just touched on something there. Boxing. Do you worry about after boxing? Because for a lot of people, it's their everything, and you do it so you can earn money for your family, and but nothing misses that that buzz of walking out like you do it at Nottingham. You know, you live for them moments. You can't you can't buy that feeling. Do you ever think, shit, when this ends, what, what am I going to do? Does that ever cross your mind? I didn't really get into boxing to make that money. Like, I didn't think, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start boxing and make a load of money. And I always wanted to achieve, but like, I never thought, like, oh, it's, it's going to be for that reason. So I wouldn't think of it like that, but I'll think of it like a massive void in my life. And uh, it's not more aiming for something. I'm going to start motocross, I think, when I retire, when I officially retire. I'm going to get into motocross only in the summer, not in the winter, because I hate the cold. But... Um, I'm going to start racing and, and something to aim for, something to get a little bit more obsessed with. But yeah, I love the buzz of it as well. So um, I'm going to get into that. Um, and even now, after fights, I come back to Nottingham and I can't catch a break. I literally can't catch a break. I'm trying to do everything, catch up with everyone and see everyone and my friends and my family. Like, I don't get enough time as it is. If I could wish everyone wish in my life, I'd have more hours in the day. Like, so yeah. Um, I will miss boxing, but at the same time, I'm already thinking of things to fulfil fulfil the the gaps. If that makes sense. And last one for me. You've had an addition to the to the gym, sort of a little bit off topic. But Anthony Joshua's been down training with Ben Davidson. What's it been like having the big man down there training for a fight with uh, Otto Wall in December 23rd? What's that been like? Yeah, it's good to see him come and then adjust to how the coaching is with Ben and Lee and Barry. And because um, obviously, when I see him. Well, when I did it myself, and I've seen Shabazz go through similar moments, and now I'm seeing AJ go through them similar moments. It's like it, it's comical because it's like you know where they're at. I know where they're at, and I know how frustrating the moments are. Then I can see them coming through him, and our oh, nights nights clicking for him, and um, it, it's good. It's good because I know it's going to benefit him so much being there, so much. And um, I think we're going to see um, a confident, more decisive AJ uh, on December 23rd. Well, look, Lee, it's been a pleasure catching up. Um, I know you have a huge night tomorrow night supporting your friend. I know you've got your friends here wanting to bugger off and go to Berlin. So, um, look, um, appreciate you giving us some of your time. Um, 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 hopefully we'll have an announcement in the new year. Um, it's a big one, if you already know. 
Uh, it's the one I've been waiting for most of my career. Uh, sometimes I didn't think it was ever going to get there, but now we're nearly there. Um, and it's one you do not want to miss. So um, City Grand, uh, probably end of the football season. Watch out for the updates and um, see you there. Lee, would appreciate your time.